Data-driven decisions are a key foundation for your digital transformation strategy. My name is Carlos Castro, I'm a solution architect with AWS, and I have the privilege of being here with Philip Young, who's the chairman of the Open Subsurface Data Forum, and with my colleague Kumar Lakshmipathy. And over that, the next 30 minutes, we'll explain how we built a common data platform across your exploration, drilling, and production data to serve as the enabler for that foundation. So Philip will kick us off uh, with uh, a discussion on the, the initiation of the motivations for OSEU. I will then take it up and show you how we've used our technology and our services to attack the problem. And then my colleague, Kumar, will round you up with a demonstration of the environment. So without further ado, Philip Young, Francia. Thank you, Carlos. Uh, I would like to give you uh, some background on OSEU. Uh, why are we doing this? Where are we? Where are we going from here? Uh, there are a number of key re realizations that we had in Shell that drive the formation of OSDU. The first realization is that the data actually drive digitalization. In the end of 2017, we realized there's a huge business value in machine learning, especially in subsurface. We can see how machine learning can revolutionize the subsurface interpretation work. However, we also realize that it takes more than half of your time to get your data ready. And that half of the time, you cannot get rid of. Without solving the data issues, you cannot deploy machine learning at scale. That's the first realization. Therefore, in the beginning of 2018, we began an effort with AWS. We collaborated with AWS in the beginning of 2018 to de develop a data platform internally at Shell. Then we asked ourselves, is this the best we can do? Is this the best solution that we can ever come up with? And our realization is that this is not, because we do not want to compete with BP, Chevron, ExxonMobil on building data platform. That's not where we want to compete with our competitors. We want to compete with them in workflow, in solutions, in machine learning, in analytics. We do not want to compete with our peers on building a data platform. We want to put our investment on where we want to compete. That's the second realization. And the third realization is we look back in the subsurface. We look at the last 30 years, 40 years. We found that in subsurface well, we have too many small ecosystems. Each of them is dominated by a vendors. As long as you stay with that one ecosystem, everything looks fine. Unfortunately, for us to execute subsurface workflow, we need to run the workflow across multiple ecosystems. That is very painful. We spend most of our time getting data out of one system and getting them into another system. We believe that is the key reason that the speed of innovation in subsurface was slow. And the, the real change is in creating a single ecosystem to accelerate digital transformations. That's the third realization. The fourth realization that is that we increasingly having joint venture partners. We do not go in a deep water exploration play on ourselves. We always have partners. We have to be able to share data with our partners. Having a proprietary data platform doesn't really help. A couple of years ago, we acquired BG Groups. It took two years to get the data from BG system into Shell system. Even we used the same tool from the same vendors. So these realization caused us to, to believe that at OSDU is the best interest to Shell and to others. And as I said before, in subsurface, 
we face a big challenge, which is data silos. Data are silos by organization, like from exploration to development. But data is siloed by workflow and from applications and by even disciplines. There's many, many silos in our workflow. And the data is not discoverable nor searchable. And this really defeats uh, the, the all uh, uh, aspiration for uh, digitalization if you can even discover or search your own data. Because of the reason that the elapsed time uh, to execute our workflow from end to end was very long. It's hard to create a solution in time to impact the business. And there is a problem of data lineage. Oftentimes, we do not know the source data used to create the final product. As a geoscientist, if you cannot trust the quality of the source data that somebody else used to create a work product, then you are hesitate to commit to the work product. Therefore, geoscientists often recreate the same work product from the source data they trust. This is a huge waste of time. So how do we address this challenge? We believe that we have to move from the current system on the left-hand side. It's very fragmented by databases, by different vendor solutions, and we build connectors to connect them to the workflow. We, it worked for us for the last 30 years, but it doesn't really work into the futures. It takes too long to execute the workflow. It is almost impossible to uh, deploy digital solution at scale. So we have to move to the right-hand side. So in the right-hand side, there are, there are a number of uh, uh, important steps that we have to take. The first step is to separate data from applications. I think that's an important realization. In the past, subsurface is application-centric environment. We focus on application, then data are the second, second thought. But now we have to change that around. We have to separate data from applications. Then we need to put data at the center. We should not put application in the center. We should put data in the center. And that is not enough. We need to have enough metadata and master data management to make sure the, the data can be searchable and can be discoverable. And then you put an uh, API on top of that that separates the data from application. So API becomes a contract between application and data. So you, you completely decouple the application from data. Now you have an environment you can build data-centric applications. Initially, we focus on explorations, development, and wells. So when you look at the right-hand side, you see the dark blue. The dark blue is the basic cloud services with security and support. That is the environment we consider to be open source. So in OSDU, the dark blue is completely open source under Apache License 2.0. But this dark blue environment provides an environment for application vendors to develop and deploy new generation applications. That's light blue. And that is the area that operators compete against one another. So we will collaborate uh, in the dark blue area, and we compete with one another in light blue area. And this is the OSDU vision. A little bit of timeline. We start the development of internal effort in January 2018. And very quickly, by March, we realize that we need something else. We need an industry-wide open subsurface and well data platform. So in June, we uh, invite seven other operators to come to Shell, uh, about 25 people in the room, and discuss how do we collaborate. Then we decided that we should collaborate under a vendor-neutral environment under Open Group. That's June 2018. So August 2018, eight founding operators joined OSDU. And OSDU was up and running in August 2018. On August 22nd, 2018, Shell open source and contribute the source code that we did together with AWS to OSDU forum. We, up, we upload all the source code to GitLab, 
that become open source. September, October 2018, we define the vision for the architectures and ways of working. January 2019, then we actually scope the first release. We call demo release and first R1 release. We, don't, we do not believe sitting in a room continue to discuss discussion. We believe an agile approach. We want to limit the scope and put something tangible uh, in the hands of the stakeholders. Then in June 2019, we have a second face-to-face uh, -face workshop defining the scope for R2. Then in August 2019 this year, we actually uh, had a demo release up and running on AWS and also on Microsoft Azure. So we actually have a system that is working today. You can go down to the second floor. In the corner, there's OSD uh, booth. You can actually see the software running. On August 22nd this year, Slumberjay decided to open source the OpenDesk, which is the data platform of Delphi, and contribute the source code to OSDU. So you look at the day, it's exactly one year apart from the day Shell open source our own data platform to Slumberjays open sourcing their data platform. So this is very significant for the communities. So OSD community voted overwhelmingly uh, positive to accept OS, uh, open desk contributions. So we're now in the process of merging uh, these two systems into a single system. And next week, we will have a face-to-face -face workshop in Houston to find the scope of R3. These are the operators that are currently in OSDU. I'm not sure this is most up-to-date because we are getting new members almost on a weekly basis. But this is the latest the view graph I had. Then this is the supplier members. We have more than uh, we have more than one page, so this is not all. And there are a couple of uh, errors here because PHP is not a supplier. PHP should be considered uh, operators. We have all the major cloud service providers with major subsurface vendors. We have major data providers. We have largest system integrators. Almost all the big player in subsurface and well are represented. There's additional page of additional suppliers. And this is a screenshot of, a, of our current demo release. Uh, I'd like to point out that this demo release was produced by me a member from 12 OSDU company, member company. 12 company contribute resources and work together for something that you can actually see today. Uh, consists of 5,000 well from the Dutch government, limited scope in data type, basically covered well bore, uh, well masters, well logs, well tops, documents. But we do have a number of applications. We have in, uh, well log data application, we have INT applications, we have one machine learning application from CGG, and we have one natural language processing uh, example from Shell. This is a, a demonstration that uh, if we can uh, put this concept into a reality, this is what you can, you can do. Plan for the futures. Uh, we're planning to release one by uh, November uh, this year, uh, focus on uh, uh, wells data. Uh, all the member, uh, OSD member company can request uh, installation to your own subscriptions, then you can load your own data into OSDU. And we're planning on release two. Release two will focus on seismic data. And then we also have a plan for release three. Release three will be the first uh, release that we combine the current OSDU platform with OpenDesk platform. That will be considered a first production release. So we're hoping that if you're interested in OSDU or you, you buy into the OSDU vision, uh, you're welcome to join the club. All right. Thank you, Philip. 
So next, we want to take you under the covers of the OSDU implementation on top of AWS. And when we looked at the design patterns for this, we had two key tenants in mind. The first was to leverage cloud-native services in the form of managed services or serverless technologies so we can afford you as a customer or a partner to focus on extracting the value of the data instead of the undifferentiated heavy lifting of maintaining individual technology components. The second key tenant was leverage our work architected framework as the guiding principle. This framework provides best practices that we have amassed over 13 years of experience of building cloud platforms for key areas like security, reliability, performance, operational excellence, and cost. So if we look at the different services, starting from the far right and, and making our way into the left, you looked at, at the data persistence layer, we leverage simple storage service, or S3, as the final destination for all of the objects that make it into the platform. We treat the metadata that you send to the platform in, in two key, 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 pattern, key patterns. The first is to leverage DynamoDB, which is our managed NoSQL key value store, to store the metadata. And then we leverage Amazon Elasticsearch Service, which is a managed service for the open source Elasticsearch project, to provide you with freeform text searches on top of that metadata so you can discover it more easily. On the services layer, we follow a microservices design pattern to implement most of the business logic. Those microservices are driven either by our Fargate container hosting service, in the case that they can be implemented in a container, and in the case that we can abstract them into a serverless function, we deploy them on AWS Lambda. Now, when you're building microservices, one of the things that you have to do is find a way to integrate all of them together. And we use a subset of our application integration tools to accomplish this. So in order to stage data into databases, we leverage Simple Queue Service, or SQS. In order to fan out the metadata into multiple databases, we leverage our Simple Notification Service, or SNS, in a fan out pattern. And then finally, we know that working in the oil and gas space, business processes are driven to workflows. So we've used our AWS Tech Function Service to drive two workflows. One is for data ingestion, and the other one is for data creation, so that we can ensure that we're letting quality data be available for the machine learning models that are going to exercise it at the top. The microservices and the workflows are exposed to you as an end user through our Amazon API Gateway Management Layer. And that layer is protected using our web application firewall for common exploits at the layer 7 of the network. Finally, in order to ensure that we have the right entitlements and obligations for different business units that you might have operating in the platform, we leverage Cognito, which is a service that we have that allows you to do authentication and authorization inside of the platform. When you look at the implementations of OECU available in the marketplace today, you'll see that there's a set of non-differentiating elements that are common to all providers. These are things that the forum defined for us, and they are things like the OSU APIs, the data models, and the certification process. But we think there are three key, three key things that differentiate our offering. And the first is we've worked with Shell over the last two years to build a production-grade platform. So that affords us first an experience of what it really takes to drive data into the platform, but also to allow the platform to scale with new features and services as you're trying to engage new stakeholders. The second element is bringing your data into AWS is going to give you access to the largest number of supporting cloud services. We have 165 of them, and they're all made available to, the, to your data to build and, and, and create on top of. I want to call out one service here. It's uh, S3 Intelligent Tiering. It's a function within S3 that allows you to automatically and through machine learning optimize the cost of the overall platform. So we're going to continuously look at the access time on the objects and uh, change those um, parameters across storage classes so we can optimize it. So for example, if you have a project that you're currently exploring for, you're going to maintain that data into what we call hot uh, storage class. And then if you have a project where you have exited a, a country or exited a particular region, we're going to move that data into our colder storage so you can pay at archival rates. And finally, also moving the data into the platform is going to give you access to our mature machine learning and artificial intelligence frameworks and services. An example of that is you can use our application programming interface or API-based services to do things like text extraction, natural language processing, or time series forecasting. Finally, if you have an idea that we don't commercialize as an API, you can use our Amazon SageMaker product, which allows you to build, train, and deploy a machine learning model, leveraging the optimizations that we make for the key frameworks like PyTorch, Apache MXNet, and TensorFlow. Another key differentiating area that 
is driven through our implementation is the ecosystem that we're building our, our, along with our customers and our partners. And the ecosystem is built with the, the concept of developing once and deploying many times. So if you're a partner, that means that you can develop a core software product and then deploy it across many customers. And if you're a customer, that means that you can develop a core functionality for one business unit and then leverage across all of the constituents in your data platform. For ISBs, we offer what we call the AWS OSU ISB enablement program. And this affords you platform credits, application review sessions with our partner solution architects, and help to the certification process so that you can get that idea from an idea to a commercialized stage. Once you're ready to commercialize, we offer the OSU Marketplace, which is a subset of our AWS Marketplace that allows you to instantiate that commercial, commercializable idea into a customer's environment directly by leveraging the billing mechanisms and the deployment mechanisms of our Marketplace product. The idea that you have can materialize in a customer environment as an application appliance, a machine learning model, or a discrete container. And finally, if you're a customer, we've partnered with 47 Lightning to build the OSDU Learning Lab experience. And this Learning Lab experience affords you a completely private experience of your own data platform where you can drive your own workflows with your private data sets um, so you can get a little bit more familiar with the platform uh, under the, the auspices of your own virtual private cloud. So in order to show you a first-hand look at the platform, I want to invite my colleague Kumar on stage to show you through our, our demo environment. Thank you, Carlos. Hello, Houston Oil and Gas. Uh, my name is Kumar Lakshmipati. I'm a solutions architect at AWS. And I'm here to show you a demo portal that we built to showcase the capabilities of the OSDU platform. To do this, we needed data, and we got data from a Dutch data set. So all the stuff you're going to see now is all uh, wells in the Netherlands and in the North Sea. We also needed apps uh, to showcase uh, the uh, APIs, and we asked our partners, INT and Wellog Data, to OSDU enable their applications. And to show you uh, NL, ML and NLP examples, uh, CGG and Shell uh, contributed some code, and we have that as well. Uh, in all, we have five apps in the portal, and uh, we made the uh, apps available uh, through a URL to uh, OSDU forum members. In the interest of time, I'm not going to click through the URL and walk through the apps. Instead, we have a video for you. Uh, it's a quick four-minute video, and uh, we'll walk through uh, the video uh, as, as the apps interact with uh, the platform behind the scenes. So we start off, and uh, you'll see the URL. And once you log in, uh, you will see the five applications I mentioned. We start with the Management Console app, uh, which has some basic search functionality. You could come in there and, and, and search using uh, JSON. And the results come back also in JSON. And we have about 5,000 wells uh, in this data set. The results are paginated, and you only see 10 of them. Moving on to app number two, this is our app from uh, INT. INT make uh, really cool visualization apps. And here you can see, like I mentioned, uh, the wells in the North Sea and the Netherlands. Uh, they let you um, select the subset of wells that you want to work with. In this case, you're searching for wells by a specific operator. Uh, and you're looking for those with uh, gamma ray values. Uh, all the data that you see here is all coming from the platform. It's using the OSDU APIs for performing the search that you saw. It's using the OSDU APIs to get delivery of the data. They have a whole suite of um, visualization tools in their arsenal, and uh, they were easily able to um, OSDU enable their applications. Uh, in this case, you're looking at uh, three-dimensional the rendering of the uh, trajectories. And what's, what's important is that there's nothing stopping you from uh, doing what you want to do with your applications using the OSDU APIs. Here is a natural language processing example, our app number three. We have ingested some data in PDF formats and then asking um, against, you know, using plain English, asking for your answers. 
Finally, the, um, the ML uh, I mentioned, machine learning, uh, you're able to select your wells uh, using the graphical interface and then deliver those wells to your Jupyter notebook. Um, CGG uh, wrote this application uh, for us. Uh, it does some unsupervised uh, k-means uh, classification, and you're able to do the, uh, uh, the, the typical things, visualize the confusion matrix. Uh, and finally, you can take the results that you have, go back to the app, and, and, and showcase them. Our last app uh, in the portal is from our partner, Wellog Data. They also um, make visualization apps. And here you see them logging onto the portal using our single sign-on. Uh, again, the same data set using the same APIs. They're showing maybe slightly different. Uh, they, they have layers, for example, on the left-hand side. Uh, you can choose to um, you know, filter the data, layer the data based on how you like it. Um, INT and Wellog data are in the audience, and they're also at the OSDU booth. We have a booth where the registration desk was, and uh, you're welcome to stop by. Uh, please do stop by, and you can ask them about how easy it was to uh, integrate their application with the OSDU platform. Um, here you're looking at curves data. Uh, once you have all the curves that you need, you can do interpretations, uh, you're, you're picking tops, for example, uh, and, you, and then they, you can see that they've created a grid with those tops. What is important here is these apps do vastly different things, but they do them using making the same API calls to search for the data, to deliver the data. And, 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 and so we are, we are very eager to see what the kind of th apps that you are going to build uh, in, in, in your uh, data platforms using the OSDU APIs. So that's the, that's the uh, video part of it. As next steps, I strongly suggest you please come by uh, the booth that we have. Uh, we are also, you're, you can also request an information session. We're happy to give it to you uh, remotely or in person. Um, we request you join the forum if you're not members already. And uh, if you are a member and would you like, uh, would like demo access, access to that portal that you just saw, stop by the booth and you can just sign up and we'll give you access. Uh, there's also our partner 47 Learning is offering, like Carlos mentioned, a learning lab and we also are going to have a SaaS offering. So if you're an ISV wanting to build these apps and you just want uh, some endpoints that are going to be kept warm for you, uh, we can do that. Thank you all. Uh, thank you for your time. Um, thank you, Philip, for uh, coming and joining us today. And uh, cheers. <laughs>